This just in, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Going into space, mathematics, quantum mechanics, the secrets of the universe, it's all there. Life is fiery with its beauty, its incredible detail. Tuning into it, they want to shatter your mind, talking about So here we go. Got a little bit to talk about today. It's, it's going to be a quick one because uh, got a lot going on, a lot of good things going on. I get to have a life today, and it's pretty amazing. The sun is out, and the guns are out. The sun's out, and the fucking gun's out. <clears throat> Just got back from the fucking gym, catching these gains. No, but... Jiu-jitsu normally gives me my cardio workout that I need, uh, but I'm nursing a shoulder injury, and I haven't really been nursing it per se uh, the past month or so. I've still been going and training, and yesterday what I did was I got a massage from the great Tasha. Shout out, Tasha. Fucking, she's great. She's got the hands of God. Such a good masseuse, man. Got the fucking she. She's like a power lifter, so she's got the really strong, strong grip, you know. And she knows a lot about the body and all that shit and uh, muscle groups and stuff. So anyway, she worked on me yesterday. She worked on my shoulder for about a half hour. And taking her advice, I'm actually going to take off this week from jujitsu and actually not do anything with my shoulder, you know, other than maybe some mobility and stretching and shit like that. So instead of jujitsu cardio, I went to the gym this morning and did some, some hard cardio on the treadmill, you know, got that endorphin rush, the runner's high, feeling fucking good, feeling great. Um, normally before jujitsu, I was running probably four, three, three to five days a week. Right. And I haven't been running as much just because, you know, the jujitsu cardio. And so today I went and it's like that, it's like that thing when, when you don't do something as much and then you do it, it's, it, you know, you feel so much better and you have a lot more energy. You know, if you take a week off from the gym and then you go in and blast biceps, like you feel like fucking Arnold, you know? So I felt strong on my run and just felt really good. And then I went into the sauna for about 20 minutes after. Um, so I basically sweat a fucking gallon of sweat, you know, and that's, that's such a good way to get out the toxins of the body. And, you know, and also the mind in kind of a holistic way, because a lot of times here in America, we're told to take this and take that to suppress this and heal that. But you know, kind of in the Eastern world of things, what they are more about, and it's obviously making its way to the States now, uh, these past few uh, decades or whatever, is, you know, the healing is actually to get rid of these heavy things weighing you down. So, you know, letting it go with a deep breath, maybe sweating out the toxins, you know, um, flushing out toxins by using things like ginger and garlic and apple cider vinegar. See how much calmer I sound now by taking that deep breath? It truly is a, a miracle worker. Rest in peace to the great Hollis Crittenden. The breath will set you free is what he used to tell me. So, yeah, doing doing a lot of that stuff this week, really, you know, taking care of my body and giving it the 
rest and the care that it needs. I woke up this morning and I just, you know, I was going to like just do a light workout. Uh, so I, I went to the gym originally. I did some abs. I did some back. You know, I just did a lot of core and hips and stuff like that stuff, you know, glutes. And I still had some in me. I had some, I had some fucking gas in the tank. So I got on that treadmill, blasted some rock music, and just got after it. Ran hard for about 20 minutes. Sweat out a lot of that goo, a lot of that shit that life drags on to you. And then I sat in the sauna, man, and uh, just was there in the moment. And I know this sounds like some hippy dippy bullshit, but it's true. It's it's so fucking true. You know, it's hard to be this like David Goggins fucking savage dog mentality iron wolf twenty four seven. I need balance. You know, people like Goggins don't. I think that that's not healthy. Uh, Goggins is another type of person. Personally, I don't think he's the uh, poster child of what you want to be uh, in the gym. You know, he does help a lot of people. He did definitely help me. I've read his book and all that shit, you know, uh, Can't Hurt Me. Great book. But, you know, I take what I want and then I leave the rest. So I took what I wanted from Goggins, right? Stay hard, get after it, dog mentality. Uh, and then I and then I leave the rest. You know, I do need eight hours of sleep. He doesn't. You know, um, I do need to talk about my feelings with a, a professional. You know, and he he doesn't, or or maybe he does, but you know what I mean. That's kind of how he comes off. You know, hard and shit. So it's it's all about balance for me, man. Uh, it really is, and it's it's so much deeper than just those words. It's it really is a. How do I put this without sounding like I fucking like crystals? Um, it's just like <clears throat> the yin and the yang, you know? You, you can't have dark without light. You know, you can't have uh, pain without pleasure. You can't have the good without the bad, man. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It really is because if we were just all happy all the time, like we wouldn't feel, we wouldn't grow. That's why, personally, I don't really fuck with a lot of people that, you know, or not not fuck with, but I don't relate to a lot of people that kind of grew up in a, you know, um, classic American home with both parents loving each other and, um, you know, because honestly, most people's trauma is from their childhood. It is what it is, and, you know, a lot of people... I think everybody has a little bit of childhood trauma, but it's, it's definitely a scale. It's definitely relative to whatever your experience is, and it's a spectrum. So basically what I'm saying is I don't really relate to people who, have that, who grew up with that kind of lifestyle, with a really uh, healthy, balanced, loving home. And, you know, I, I relate more to the gritty, the grimy, the struggle. You know, dad wasn't home and doing drugs and going to jail and, you know, getting picked on, getting arrested and you know, uh, just getting in the trouble and always feeling like I was different than people or apart from people. So a lot of my growth was found in, in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step programs, forever grateful to those programs. And, you know, so I relate to a lot more of those type of people. The, it's a quote from that movie. I think the movie is called Split. He says, the broken are the more evolved. And I relate to that heavy, you know, because the more, the more broken you are, the more work you do, and the more evolved you become. It's just, I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody. Um, and I'm also not saying that I'm worse than anybody either. You know, there's that quote in the big book, uh, being an egomaniac with an inferiority complex, essentially saying that feeling like you're better than yet worse than at the same time. For most of my life, I related to that. For most of my life, I felt that I wasn't good enough, 
for the uh, other kids in my grade because they grew up in, you know, Providence Country Club with, you know, two cars in the garage. And, you know, mom was a house, uh, she was a, um, you know, housewife and dad was a breadwinner. And they, you know, so they went to vacations together every year and la-di-da. But all that glitters isn't gold either, and I realize that. So, you know, going on kind of a tangent here, but really just uh, being being myself and talking my truth today, because again, this podcast isn't to get listeners. This podcast is for me, myself, and I, and you know, people who who listen to it and like it. I appreciate that. That's that's awesome. You know, I really do. But at the same time. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and forth on what I used to say. It's like, I don't have to do this. Like I had to be a rapper or like I had to use drugs or like I had to move to New York or like I had to be in the military or I would like die. Right. This isn't that this is truly a therapeutic way for me to get out of myself. And that's what it's all about. So yeah. And, um, just, just, just trying to celebrate life's wins, um, you know, and I always had a hard time with that too, because, you know, the way I grew up, it was, you, you weren't, I didn't feel that I was good enough if I didn't achieve these massive uh, victories, these milestones, right? If I, if I didn't get into a university, or if I didn't make it on the sports team, or if I, you know, uh, even today, if I don't make six figures, you know, I was always kind of berated for not being good enough. You know, it's like LeBron James, you know, he, he probably feels that he's not good enough. He, he probably feels that he's, you know, he's not Michael Jordan, right? Um, <clears throat> if I ever make enough money to buy a Corvette, cool, but like I'm going to want that Ferrari next. You know, it's just never enough. So how do we become content with what we have and life on life's terms as it is? I don't have the answer to that. I, 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 never, I never will, but I, I have the awareness today that at least that I'm aware of it and that it exists and that it's a thing. You know, I'm not completely fucking oblivious and I don't rely on material things to fill my God-sized hole, as I call it. You know, because sex and drugs and money never did that for me. So I, I, I think it's a God-sized hole. I think I need to fill that with God and the goodness and love and, you know, all the, the things that aren't material, the things that are truly you couldn't, you cannot put a price on it, you know? I still would rather cry in a Ferrari than a Toyota, right? I get that. I'd, I'd still love to have a fucking lake house, you know, and a mansion, but... That's not, that's not the end-all, be-all today for me. Um, I like real estate. I like to look at houses on Google Maps. I like to just look at Zillow and see what the market looks like and, you know, look at these stunning estates and, you know, I'll, I'll look at houses on Palm Beach or mansions in uh, Calabasas or even fucking townhomes and Upper West Side, right? And those things are nice, and it'd be great to have them. But at the same time, you know, I've been in this small one-bedroom apartment for like a year now, and I still wake up to this day in shock of where my life is today and how grateful I am. No bullshit. I'll have these reoccurring dreams. I don't know if you guys ever have reoccurring dreams. Mine are usually nightmares. They're not really dreams, but I'll have this one specific nightmare a lot where I'm in a dirty, disgusting halfway house. It's in like a cul-de-sac. The yard is uh, not manicured. There's trash and there's bugs and there's just a bunch of fucking junkies living together and it's gross and I share a room with a guy and my sheets and blankets are dirty and I just hate it. It's miserable because I've been there before. I've been in that exact scenario. And then during that dream, I will leave the house against medical advice, AMA. And then I'll go back to my apartment. And in the dream, the apartment is like a super fancy, uh, you ever see American Psycho, right? Everything's white and there's a, 
floor to ceiling uh, glass, and it's got all this like modern furniture, and it's it, you know it's a fucking million dollar apartment, whatever. But um, and I'll go back into that apartment in the dream, and uh, and then I'll wake up always from that part of the dream. I'll wake up and I open my eyes, and for a split second I think I'm still in a halfway house, and then I look around and I just see this beautiful one bedroom apartment with my own shit. No, no roommates, no house managers, no bugs, no fucking, you know, I had bed bugs in one of my halfway houses. Uh, and, uh, I'll just, I'll just wake up and I'll, I'll, I'll feel this overwhelming sense of gratitude and the desire to not fuck it up because let's be honest, I've, I've fucked up a lot. I've done that. I've done that dance. I've been there, done that, right? So uh, that's usually what happens. I'll wake up, and honestly, I, I, I like those days because the dream itself isn't pleasant, but then I wake up, and I just look around, and that is always a great start to my day when I have that dream because I just, I, I, you know, I'm still in shock, truly. It's almost a year that I'm here, and the fact that I don't have any roommates, I don't have to worry about, you know, you leaving your dirty dishes in the sink or, hey, can you take your shit out of the dryer so I can do mine? You know, I don't have to do little things like that or, or clean up your fucking dog hair. You know, I had roommates and they had dogs. Shit was annoying. But I don't have to worry about that today. So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's just, it's a beautiful life. And, you know, with that comes a lot of like, with great power comes great responsibility, right? I do have to make a certain amount of income to maintain this lifestyle for myself. And that's the hard thing because I don't really like what I do. But again, who does? How many people love their fucking jobs? Not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, if you do, good for you. You made it. You are living the American dream. Go fuck yourself. Let me know how you did it. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like... You know, I'm working for a company that is very shady, uh, has horrible, horrible reviews on the Better Business Bureau, 1.5 out of 5 stars, just laid off 80 or 20% of our staff, which is over 800 people. I don't know if I'll have a job tomorrow. I hope that I have a job until December 7th because that is the end of the annual enrollment period for Medicare, and that is where I make most of my money. And then after that, I can go kick, they can go kick rocks and I can have a month off, get paid for it, and uh, you know, come back and, and, and look for something else. And I'll have the means to do so, God willing. I keep my job, you know. I'll have the means to uh, chill back for a little bit and find something that I really want to do. But also, it's like it's not that fucking important, right? I can't just say I deserve a job that I love and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm entitled to have a fucking orgasm of a career, would that be sick? Fuck yeah. Could I, would I love to just get paid a million dollars to, uh, or even a hundred K to just chill here like this and get listeners and, um, have a podcast and talk shit like that, that, that would be amazing. Cause I do love doing this. Um, you know, but, um, you don't know if you don't try, and you got you got to put the work in, all that shit, and uh, yeah, man. So like, having having a job that I that I love and having a career that fills my uh, fulfills me is is important to me. It might not be for a lot of other people because I'm just gonna be honest. A lot of a lot of other people are able to like David Goggins uh, embrace the struggle a lot more. You know. I definitely have struggled for most of my life with the drugs and all that stuff. But at the same time, being in recovery now, I know my limits. I know my boundaries. I know that I need a certain amount of sleep. I know that I need to do a certain amount of hours a week in the gym. Um, and with that comes, you know, I want to have a certain amount of income to, to, to live a life and be happy and not struggle like I did uh, when I worked at every fucking restaurant in Charlotte, right? So... I don't know, man. Um, 
seek and you shall find. You know, I'm on the Indeed and the Career Builders, and I'm sending I'm sending out applications and shit. You know, uh, failed a polygraph exam yesterday for the sheriff's office because let's be honest, I have a history. They can get fucked because honestly, uh, the hiring process is shit. I think that's why our law enforcement is where it is today. The candidates that they hire aren't qualified and uh, aren't up to do the job, you know? And I think that I would have been a huge asset to the community, but, you know, it's like not trying to sound cocky, but they don't, they don't deserve someone like me or like someone who works fucking hard and is dedicated and will do whatever it takes to get the job done. So what? I had some hiccups in the past. Yeah, we'll get fucked, okay? Because I don't really care to make 40K a year anyways and be hated by 90% of the world and have to work in a jail for the first two years before I can go on to a, uh, you know, outside field team or whatever, narcotics or patrol or whatever. So I'm just ranting, uh, ranting, ranting. I'm just ranting, ball. And that's, that's kind of what it is, you know. Um, it's... Uh, it's helpful to, to have a job that pays the bills and more and put a little bit of money away. You know, how much am I willing to sacrifice for my happiness? Not that much, you know, but at least today I have a job where I do get to work from home and I'm not flipping burgers at McDonald's or I'm not doing fucking mechanics or, you know, construction. I would hate doing that stuff. I'm not a very good person when it comes to working with my hands, working outside, repairing shit, it's just not really my thing. See, this is my thing, just bullshitting, talking, communicating, <laughs> being a fucking Gavon, Paisan, you know what I mean? So, um, any, anyway, you know, like, I think that I'll find what I'm looking for, and I, I know I will if I, if I seek it, and I search for it, and I, uh, you know, I pray too, but it's not like, it's like prayer in action, you know? It's like the classic saying, you know, you can pray to God, all day uh, to get a fucking sandwich, right? But you have to fucking make, you have to go and make the sandwich yourself. You have to go buy the bread and spread the mayonnaise and, you know, cut the turkey or whatever. You have to put in the work still. You can pray for God to turn the lights on in your mind or turn the lights on in your conscious or literally just go turn the light. You can pray for God to turn the lights on in the room, but you have to get up and turn the lights on right? So uh, you, you, you still have to put in the action, and I know that today. I can't just sit there with my hands under my ass and pray and not do any action, right? Prayer without action is simply a, uh, a dream. Prayer without action is just a desire. So um, what do you desire? Look deep into the bellows of your own mind. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I don't know. I see myself uh, in 10 years, hopefully still here and alive and well and kicking and, you know, just, uh, <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. I, 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 uh, I'm going to go chill at the pool now, get some vitamin D, because that's another way to heal, right? Instead of, uh, in my opinion, instead of taking a fucking vaccine, putting shit into your body. It's like, how about the sun and the the earth and the rays and the wind? Um, natural light, natural beauty. Uh, how about how about how about I take that into myself and let that heal me a little bit? And that's uh, that's what it's all about, man. Holistic health is a big thing, but I'm not one of those people that prays to crystals or you know, says that I should go for it because I'm a Scorpio or makes major life decisions based on what the fucking planets are doing. You know, all that stuff's cool. It's interesting, whatever. I have the apps. I have CoStar. I've been there, done that, right? But I'm more of a realist. That's what my high school English teacher told me. He said, Kai, you're a realist. And I was on Xanax when he told me that. So I don't really remember, or I didn't know what he meant when he said it. But now I know what he meant. Now I know what he meant, okay? So by saying I'm a realist again, not saying that I'm better than you, not saying that I'm worse than you, I'm just saying I am that I am, the great Peter Tosh.
you are, you know, and this is going to sound like hippy dippy shit, but again, we're on a spiritual path today. Uh, people will say, you know, who are you? And you'll respond with, oh, I'm a, I'm a 29 year old person in recovery. No, that's, that's your age. And that's, you know, something that you've been through. Who are you? Oh, um, I'm a, I'm a guy who uh, sells health insurance. Okay. That's your gender and your career field. Who are you? Uh, I am a brother. I'm a son. And, uh, I, you know, I'm whatever. Okay, so you're a sibling and you have a mom, but who are you, right? You can ask these questions all over and over again, and it can fucking annoy you. I've had people that worked with me, and they, they would ask me that question, and I would get so fucking mad. Um, but who, who I am today is consciousness. You know, I am a being. I am, I am me. I am that I am. And when I can accept that I'm not my mistakes, I'm not my failures, I'm not my paycheck, I'm not the house that I live in or the car that I drive, I'm not the, you know, the past, um, I'm not short, I'm not, well, I'm short, but, you know, I'm not my insecurities, that is basically what I'm saying, um, but rather I am the conscious observer of my thoughts, because I'm not my thoughts either, right? I am simply the one observing those thoughts. I am consciousness. I don't know if that makes sense to you. If it does, fuck yeah. If not, maybe you got some work to do. <laughs> but that's what it is. I love life. Sometimes, you know, in 10 minutes, I might get a text that uh, annoys me and I might get fucking rage and then um, just have to Take a deep breath again and just remind myself that I am, that I am. So have a great day. God bless. And until next time, peace.